everybody welcome back to my channel today is the last video in my series of me as an amateur seamstress making an 18th century ball gown as well as the final reveal of me wearing the ball gowns up until now you've seen all the different pieces and I've talked about how I've made them so today we're actually gonna put it all together with the hair the makeup the accessories and we're gonna go outside into my backyard and walk around like we're a lady of leisure in the 18th century so today's video is kind of two different things so beauty and accessories this comes from the fact that Carolina Zabrowska who was kind of the original person that inspired me to make this dress she talked in one of her videos a lot about accessories and how they really tie an outfit together and you can't just like go out and wear the gown in a messy bun it just doesn't look right most of these accessories I've actually made myself because I've had a lot of free time and I recently ordered some pinking shears so that I don't have to worry about fraying or overlocking anything so I kind of went to town when it came to making my accessories for this outfit the first First thing I want to show you is my choker. So this is fairly accurate-ish because like chokers were quite on vogue in this period. Now I obviously as you can see I made this out of a couple different scrap things that I had. So the polyester pink taffeta that I used on the rest of the dress and then I actually used some of the ribbon, the girl grain ribbon that I had left over from the underskirt to provide some support structure to the back and I cut the taffeta with some pinking shears to give it this little diamond effect, which apparently is not period accurate for zigzag. Apparently it would have been scalloped. I didn't know that. Meh. And then this little bit in the middle here is actually two pieces. So one is a pearl pendant that I think I might've bought when I was in Bulgaria on field school. I'm not quite sure where it came from, but it was in my jewelry box. And then the second bit, this little diamond and pearl cluster here is actually from a hairpin that I bought at a wedding expo show where I was on a like a booth selling things to brides and grooms and the one next to me had all this bridal jewelry and the woman had all these hairpins that she was making and I bought one and this was the ornamentation on it and it eventually fell off and I always kept it and I'm now glad that I did. <laughs> it's you know a bit of a hack job in terms of how I sewed it. I originally tried to use a bar and hook closure at the back and then an elastic but neither of those methods worked very well or were as tight as I wanted them to be. So what I ended up doing was cutting out more of the same fabric with the pinking shears in long strips, just attaching them, and then I tie it in a bow at the back. And eventually I'm going to try and get some actual ribbon that matches this color to go with it because like this is already fraying because of all the friction against it when I'm tying the bow. This is probably like my favorite piece that I've made for the outfit. I don't know why, I just think it's really pretty. So next up, the other accessories I have are my hair bows. So these, again, are just cut out from the pink taffeta with the pinking shears, and I just doubled them up, sewed in the middle, and then I just put a hairpin through the thread bit that's holding it all together in the middle, and then, or a bobby pin, and then I just put them into my hair. I think they're quite pretty. I really like them. I also have this uh, gold leaf comb in the back, which I have had for ages and have used on quite a bit of hair things and I just thought it went quite well with the outfit to help like kind of hold up the back of the hair. Now the hair itself, initially I was going to do the coiffure de banane from the American Duchess uh, beauty, 18th century beauty book. I tried and demoed it the other day following a Loepsi tutorial that she did of the same hairdo and I didn't mind it, but it wasn't exactly what I wanted it to be. It was a bit too big and it was quite hard to do on myself and it took me quite a long time. I also am not keen to put powder and pomade into my hair. Instead, I just used dry shampoo and I teased it and then I used hairspray to smooth everything down after. I'm not keen to do tons and tons of work to my hair. I used to do uh, synchronized swimming or artistic swimming as it's called now as a child and I used to have to put gelatin in my hair and I just have nightmares of trying to get it out and from what I've heard about pomade and powder I'm not really eager to repeat that experience so I didn't do it. So I'm just going to show you a brief time lapse of me just doing my hair. Okay so we're going to actually start with all the tools I use for making this hairstyle. So we've got my wooden chopping board for holding my hot iron, we've got my hairbrush and then my rat tail comb for brushing and parting my hair. We've got my two hair rats that I made out of spare hair and pantyhose but I only ended up using one some clear elastic hair bands, some bobby pins and hair pins, used a lot of those, my thin curling iron, and then my hairspray for smoothing away all the frizzies and making sure everything stays in place, 
my dry shampoo, which is apparently for unicorns. That's the reason I bought it in the store. And then my gold hair comb for uh, keeping up the back. And then last but not least, we have my little pink hair bow pins that I made. Now we're going to get onto the hairstyle itself. So the first thing you're going to see me do here is section off the, the front part of my hair, tease the roots, and then curl the ends and wrap them around my hair rat that I then roll towards my scalp and pin in place. This creates kind of the first poof front of the hairstyle. Um, and then once I finished that, I kind of moved on and I sectioned off the center top part of my hair and did the kind of the same thing, but without using the actual hair rat itself. So I teased the roots, curled the ends around the curling iron, and then rolled them towards my head where I pinned them in place. And I alternated the curls in which direction they were going as I went towards the back of my head. Once I finished the center, I then moved on to the sides. Again, same thing, tease, curl, pin, but sides, they just did not turn out the way that I wanted them to. They definitely weren't the same. I don't know if I just curled them in different directions or whatever, but yeah, it wasn't nearly as neat as I wanted to be, but that's okay. It wasn't meant to be perfect. Once I finished the sides, I then curled my little lock at the bottom and then you just see me clip it up out of the way because my hair doesn't like to stay curled. And once I finished that, I moved on to adding in all my hair accessories and finishing off with just some hairspray to get rid of the worst of the frizzies because, you know, teasing doesn't really help with that. And then I was finished. I'm quite pleased, to be honest, with the final product. I think it looks quite nice. It's not too big for my head and it's not like in unmanageable in terms of the hair. It wasn't too hard to do. And it only took me maybe an hour. And it's quite secure. Like this, this ain't going anywhere. Like I can shake as much as I want. And uh, it's not going anywhere. And it doesn't hurt my hair roots too much. It's not pulling on them too hard. It's not too heavy for my head. So I'm quite happy with this hairstyle and I'll repeat it if and when I wear this outfit again. In terms of my makeup, I have another just short time lapse here of me doing my makeup. The makeup here was pretty basic. I used my lightest foundation all over my face and then set it with some powder before moving on to my eyebrows and giving them just a little bit more of a rounded shape than they have naturally as per the 18th century paintings that I've seen. For my eyes, I just tight lined my inner waterline on my upper eyelid and added some mascara in to just give my eyes a little bit more definition since eye makeup wasn't really a thing and then topped it off with a whole load of blush. And I used a little bit of a Benefit Benetint stain on my lips because I tried, I did previously try to put on like a really red lipstick and I just didn't, just didn't like how it looked so I went pink to match the rest of the outfit. This is the final look. And I'm quite pleased with it. Just added a couple final touches to the outfit after this of things that I already owned and didn't have to make. The first of which is this beautiful sandalwood fan that someone gave me when I was a kid who had been to China. And then the final jewelry is a little pearl bracelet and then some pearl drop earrings that I already owned. So I've put this all together and I've gone and I've walked around in my backyard and, and voila. It. that's the final process that's my dress it looks great I'm happy with it would I do some things differently yes but I think for a first attempt at this I knocked it pretty much out of the park so thank you if you have stuck with me through all of these videos thank you if you stuck through me to the end of just this video I appreciate it if you have any comments or questions please put them down below if you liked this video please give me a thumbs up if you liked my dress please give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more from me about archeology, span being an archeologist, and maybe some future sewing videos, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you so much for watching guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye.